Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this beta video, I wanted to show uh, some of the current functionality of state sets and basically it going from uh, 3ds Max into After Effects and how that workflow works. Uh, so, this will be kind of a around the world type of demo. And you can see in the scene here we have a few different objects, a couple different cameras, as well as a couple different lights. Um, this scene is really intended to have objects that we would want to bring over to After Effects and see how that reacts. There's linked objects, objects that are planes, objects with controllers like noise controllers and constraints like path constraints, um, as well as cameras that are free and targeted lights that are just point lights as well as targeted lights with shadows as well as uh, intensity and color changes. When you launch state sets uh, by going up here and saying open you get something that looks like this which has um, our state sets as well as our object state. So state sets are kind of like layers basically they are layering any changes that you do to your scene and you can use them for render passes. So like in this case there really isn't any changes uh, done to the scene, but we'll call this uh, beauty. It's not really that beautiful. And if we wanted to make maybe one simple change, we click on record and uh, do something like um, go in here and we'll just turn off final gather for the moment and stop recording. You can see that that one change will be tracked inside here. And like layers, when you uh, click on the little arrow, that's when this state is enabled. When no states are enabled, just the way that you saved your scene in 3ds Max is basically how things will render and op operate. So right now, if I render the scene, we're going to have Final Gather and just the way that it's kind of set up right there. If I apply this state set, then of course that will not be available. So that'll be kind of our just beauty state. And to create a new one, you just click on the Add New State button. You can slow double click to rename it and maybe we would make a AO pass. So I'll click on record and with state sets it's uh, a good idea to have basically the things that you would want to change about your scene uh, like materials um, and uh, render elements and other things kind of set up because you want to just turn those on and off for when you do your recording. So in this case I have an AO material as well as a map material that's already set up with the base scene and I'm just going to go and apply that in the renderer as I record so I'll go in here and uh, just to do this to the entire entire scene I'll go into processing and I'll enable the material override and I'll pop that guy in there. Now I'll render this out and you can see it renders through with the AO in the material override which is okay uh, but uh, probably don't want to have final gather on so that's something that we would check off too and you can do all these tests while you're recording and all the rest of that so that you can make sure that you get the right setup for your uh, for your state set so that looks good and when I'm done with this I'll just click on stop recording and all those changes will be saved out so now I have these two passes uh, I'll just make a couple more uh, I'm gonna make a teapot pass where I go in. Uh, other things that you may want to record are the either render properties or states of things in the scene. So uh, I can grab this and I can say hide unselected so that only the teapot shows up and I can also um, set any sort of properties that I want for this object. So uh, we'll do that there and stop recording and you see when we kind of pop out of this that's our state set this is going to be the AO and the beauty and last but not least we'll add a map pass and I'll just click on record hop into my material editor which I already had open and whatever it is I want so we'll say that the teapot will just mat out its color we could hide a bunch of other things but uh, I guess also what I'll do is I'll go in and just set some object properties for this so I could go in here and maybe I still want that in for reflections or something like that but I can ask it not to be visible to the camera um, or not to cast shadows so now when I hop out of here and we can see that even in the viewport but when I render this out we have our pass it's not visible and it's not casting shadows um, but if we did want just the shadow for that, 
we could go back in and uh, just say that we did want it to cast shadows but not be reflective and I think uh, of course again one more thing I might want to do depending on what I'm setting up here is uh, just turn off final gather so we should get the shadow from this now but it's not going to be visible to the camera and this is matted out and while these are probably not uh, the exact passes you might set up I think you get the idea of the flexibility of the system and uh, how you can go through and adjust and add to any of these adding to them is very easy so if I want to go in and in the teapot state just click on record again then I can go into that state and I can say um, unhide by name and say that you know for whatever reason I wanted the ground to be present in this as well and bring that back and then that will be saved there so if we hop in and hop out and that's all right there now all these passes are going to be taken into um, After Effects as footage or whatever the compositing app is uh, that we might be using in this case it'll be After Effects and uh, so you may want to order these which you can do just by dragging and there's also some parenting which uh, I'll talk about a little bit later but uh, you can reorder any of these passes as well as uh, adjust their hierarchy and then the setup for rendering these you can do um, you can set each one of these so like if we want to go into the teapot pass and manually set where we want to render this out to we can go in and say you know I'm gonna if you're just trying to do something real simple you can go and you can save it out and that will track it if you have a number of passes like you do here you also have the option to right click and say uh, set up render outputs and then you have this little dialog which will uh, save the, all the render outputs of any state that's in here to a folder called state sets with a name the name of the state set output.tga or whatever you want to set up and it will save all the paths out so now when we hop into this teapot state you can see that uh, the save pile, file path is there and uh, we can adjust that if we wanted to as well so the kind of outlier in this is our object state and this is the state uh, that persists and is here for anything that you want to send over to your compositing package things like lights cameras and any object in the form of a null object and uh, any plain object in the form of a solid when it comes to after effects so when we go and click on render what's going to happen is everything in the scene will um, disappear and basically you just want to unhide anything that you want to send over anything that's present in this state will get sent over to your compositing package so I'm gonna say uh, unhide by name and go in and pick what I want so if I just wanted to send over this camera then that's all I would pick and unhide it um, this scene is set up to um, pretty much test all the different objects we could send over so I'm gonna unhide pretty much everything just so that that's there and then you'll be able to see when we go into this state exactly what is going to get sent over so all these objects will be sent over as null objects and the lights and cameras and stuff will be sent over as cameras so now we want to go through and render our scene you know uh, this these will just be single files but uh, of course you can do uh, strings and AVIs and whatever else you want so you can right click here and say render all states and this will simply go through all the different states and render them out. If you have network rendering avail available or enabled in any one of these then it'll go through and send that out to the farm and once it returns it'll go to the next state. Um, and these states also have start and end max script ability so you can uh, add scripts to as you enter and exit a state. So now it's gone through and rendered all those states and we can pretty much do one of two things we could just go in uh, to our compositing package from here or we can use the uh, schematic view in order to adjust the way that this will be presented in the compositing package if you want to make use of the schematic view you're going to right click and go to uh, create composite view and this will pop out our composite view with all of our objects here and you can see that uh, all the passes are here as far as the AO pass and uh, there's a little render of each one and then that is going into the final composite output which all have their own layers so you can see we have the teapot layer we have the AO layer we have the matte layer and the beauty layer and what you could do here is basically 
arrange these the way that you want to see them in After Effects. So if you wanted the AO to be on top, you could switch the outputs. And you can also adjust things like the opacity. So you can adjust the opacity of this and the blend mode. So, you know, something common might be to set the blend mode of the AO to multiply or uh, the mat. Maybe you would want to just set to an opacity of zero because that's not going to really be used except for some color selecting or effects options uh, and things of that nature. And the other thing that you can do here is we intend to have a, a few effects that will have the ability to uh, do simple things like relighting, uh, gamma control, uh, hue saturation stuff, and uh, things to do color correction um, that we can just kind of adjust really quickly here and even bring those over to After Effects to do a little bit more later. Uh, so if you want to kind of play with that. Uh, the other thing that you can do here is if you have a lot of different nested layers, whether you're adjusting this to go over into After Effects or not, uh, if you have a number of passes that have dependencies and instancing and other things, which we'll show a little bit later, uh, this view can really help to wire those together uh, and make uh, a lot clearer sense out of that setup. So that's kind of the schematic view here. And once you've set that up and you're happy with that, you can right click and say output to compositor. So this creates the link between uh, 3ds Max and After Effects and we can just say create a link. It'll save out the SOF file and you can see what is updated here is cameras, lights, solids, nulls, and footage. And solids in this case is uh, any sort of plane object that's in 3ds Max. And if you make any changes here, like add something or remove something or change the position of an object, you can always click on update to link. So now we'll go over in here to After Effects and just go to the file menu and choose open compositor link. And that's going to bring up this little dialog as well. And we can go and pick that same link that we saved this out as. So we'll open that up and you can see it'll build the scene over here we get our composition, our footage, and then all of our objects brought in as uh, solids which are either nulls or their actual objects. So just double click on the composition and you can see all those objects loaded in there. And we have our camera here and all the objects are color coded and they're also um, labeled with the Autodesk link marker. So you can see that footage is purple. Any sort of plane is going to be uh, red. Null objects are green and lights are yellow. Of course, cameras are blue. So we can go through the footage here and you can see that that stuff is all in here. And then more importantly, we have our objects. Uh, After Effects is not super pleased about scrubbing with uh, the recording software. So I'll have to just click through. Uh, but you can see that we have our video plane, which we have here and you can track that and put whatever it is that you want on that. We also have, uh, this is the linked objects in here and you can see that those are animated all the way through and things like our lights and uh, the other cameras. So if we go to camera two, we can see that this is camera two. Um, if I could play this back too, or actually you can just see in the keyframes here, things like the jitter box uh, is keyed uh, as far as its controller is concerned and this right here is the um, little cylinder there, so that should be named. Where's my uh, cylinder? So you can see that that's tracking as far as the controller goes. Okay, so you can adjust any of these things as you like. Uh, for instance, if we wanted to go into the video planes transform, so we can just grab all these keyframes and let's just move them in X. So I'll set that over there, or actually we'll set that back. We'll adjust them there, uh, let's see why, and that way it'll be penetrating the plane and we can say update to link. So any changes that you have here and you want to make and bring back over to Max, you can do that as well. And you can see that that plane has been updated here and the animation will go all the way through. You'll also see that this has been updated using a layered or list controller here. So we haven't lost our original animation. We can kind of blend between those two and uh, set that up. And it, we won't create multiples of these. Uh, it's just going to create the one 
and overwrite that one controller which is marked as an After Effects controller so that you can go back and forth a bunch of times if you want without getting a unruly scene. Um, so that's uh, I guess the around the world with uh, setting up some passes, setting up your objects to get them back and forth to After Effects. And of course, if you only want to do a small amount of this, if you only want to do set up just render passes for any composition system, you can do that. If you just want to pick three different cameras and send them over to After Effects, you can just record and add them into the objects area uh, and then send them over there. Um, or if you want to do any blend in between you can do that type of stuff too so just if you wanted to just set up multiple cameras or anything like that so hopefully that'll be helpful in your testing thank you very much